Today, April 4th, 2023, the Metro Nashville Police Department conducted a press conference to speak in detail regarding the events that took place last Monday, March 27th, at the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee. There was an opportunity led by Police Chief John Drake to honor the police officers that eliminated the threat and saved countless lives. It was an opportunity to draw attention to the brave men and women, the teachers of the Covenant School, that also saved many lives. And it painted a picture of teamwork when faced with an emergency to minimize the damage and also pay respect to the families of the six victims lost. Here is the news conference from Nashville in its entirety. Last Monday uh, was a day that We all hope we would never see anywhere, and especially here in Nashville. Uh, We've trained for incidents like this for years with the thoughts that if it ever happened, we would not hesitate. We would go in and we would do whatever was needed for the safety of those involved. The call Monday literally impacted hundreds of members of our police department. You'll hear from just a few uh, today and the commander about their efforts, what they just detail in the day. But there was, you you will hear that there was an officer taking gunfire that took cover. Uh, You'll hear uh, in the future that this officer also went in and pulled a kid out of this uh, school to safety. We wanna make sure that we know that while we highlighting, we're highlighting these officers, there's a lot more um, that was going on. The first responders that responded, Rex Engelberg, uh, Mike Colazzo, and Sergeant Mathis, did what we were trained to do. They formed together, they got prepared and went right in. Knowing that every second, every moment wasted could cost lives. And I'm so incredibly proud of not only them, but other members of our police department as well. I watched video of officers who went into the school, took pulse of the victims, hoping there was life in these people, grabbed these kids and ran out of the school, hoping uh, to save lives. I'm so incredibly grateful for them. We set up a reunification site for kids and for officers to come together for, to reunite with parents. I had parents at the scene who were telling me things like, hey, I found one of my kids, but I can't find other. And all I could say at that moment was, please go to Woodmont Church and thank you, Woodmont, for reunification. At the same time, I knew there was three victims and I was just praying and hoping the person I was talking to, it, it, it wasn't them because I could see the pain and the hurt that they were dealing with. Also to our officers and our chaplains and our counselors who went to Vanderbilt University Hospital, who spoke with the families, gave counseling to the degree that at the funeral services, the families wanted to have these counselors and chaplains and behavioral health counselors with their families. It's just an incredibly tough day, but I'm really thankful to them. I'm thankful also to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I listened to an interview of one of the doctors and said he just wanted the opportunity to save lives. He didn't get that opportunity. Neither did our personality but they were able to go in and prevent more from being harmed. Also, our investigative team, who had to painstakingly go through everything that went through that school, every video, every victim. And as I walked through the hallways and seen people in the hallway and all the things that I saw, They had to go through this hour by hour, day after day, painstakingly going through journals and this investigation 
is still ongoing. We'll say thanks to our federal partners as well uh, for coming out and just being just totally engaged uh, with what we had going on. To our crime scene experts, the civilians who never really, you never really hear about, but they're a major part of what we do to reconstruct crime scenes, to go in and to pick up evidence and to gather whatever is needed to put that together for whatever case that we're looking at. They were there hour after hour as well. I want to give a special thanks to our partners at the fire department and paramedics. In our training, when I first trained years and years and years ago, we were trained to go in, continue going towards the threat, stepping over anything, any casualty, whether it's a police officer, victim, until the threat was taken out, and then you go back and extract. But now we have medical personnel uh, that wear ballistic helmets, ballistic vests. They can go in when we go in and extract people, hoping that we can do this in an effort, in a manner that we can save lives. Also to our dispatchers who, if you can imagine taking call after call, and I hear 25 or 30 calls came in, they were inundated, and they had to listen to people screaming, crying, hearing gunfire, and triaging these calls and dispatching it to officers. I want to say thank you to our entire team. Uh, what you don't know with our training is that one officer is from Central Precinct, the other is from Midtown, and just so happened when the call came in, they formed together, and you would have thought that they worked together all the time. But that's not the case. That's just how we train and prepare. I want to give a special thanks, and, and this is not said often, to the teachers at Covenant School. The teachers had gone through active aggressor, active shooter training recently. Their efforts also saved lives. They knew how to have the kids on the wall, away from the windows, out of the hallways, where we could have had a lot more casualties, they were able to protect these kids as well. And I want to say thank you uh, to the teachers. I want to express my condolences to the six families. Uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, visit uh, all of the funerals so far, uh, five. I have one more, which is Ms. Kuntz, uh, which will be uh, tomorrow. I've had the opportunity to talk to parents and they are incredibly thankful for everything. And what I've learned in this is I've renewed my faith because as I sat in a church Saturday and I watched students from Covenant School take flowers down to the altar and literally I'm in tears and the other first responders, police officers, firefighters, we're in tears. And I look at these kids and they look at us and they say, thank you for your service. And they believe that their classmate is going to heaven, that they're in a better place, and they're not hurting. The ones that were hurting the most was us. And so I wanna thank Covenant School for instilling that in them and for teaching them there's maybe something better. They're not hurting anymore. Thank you to all of you all. I know it's been intensive covering all of this. I'm incredibly thankful for you. I'm incredibly thankful for our team. I'm thankful to our mayor. I've not had the opportunity to tell him thank you for leading us through this, during this time. Uh, to Don Aaron, to Chris Muffer, to others. This has not been an easy time. And I'll, I'll have to say this, uh, on the way to work one day, shortly after the shooting, usually I see kids and I smile because I wonder what their future is gonna be. And the next day I'm headed in and I see kids and I literally, I'm in the car by myself and I'm crying. And instead of being happy about thinking about these kids' future, I'm thinking about these three kids and these other adults, well, especially these three kids, would never get to experience whatever was in store in life for them. And 
I always say this to our men and women. Um, no one ever said it would be easy, but they said it would be worth it. I'm totally proud of our men for what they did. So thank you. Commander Dayton Wheeler oversees operations of the Midtown Hills Precinct, the precinct in which the Covenant Campus is located. Commander Wheeler will speak with you about the broad response of the officers from the Midtown Hills Precinct and the impact that response has had. Commander Dayton Wheeler. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to start off by saying uh, the family members and the victims of this tragedy have been in my thoughts and prayers since that Monday morning, and we will continue to pray for them as they walk through this tragedy. So Monday, March 27th, is a day that I will never forget. Um, I walked out of that office at 10 o'clock that morning uh, to drive around the precinct, and the initial call came out, and immediately my stomach dropped when I realized it was a school. When we arrived on scene, uh, officers were beginning to form what we call our entry and contact teams. Um, this was something that I immediately knew looking up that officers were doing what they had been trained to do as we arrived on scene. There was no stimulus that was driving us. However, we were going into the school in multiple different entrances to begin our search for the shooter. As they were doing this, uh, we began to form operational plans outside. Uh, I was partnered with my counterpart from the fire department, setting up our ambulances in an effort to, once the shooter was eliminated, we would begin our rescue operations for any victims that were inside. At that time, we began to receive gunfire from a second floor window uh, as officers were inside searching for that individual. Once uh, that individual was uh, neutralized, operations began with our rescue task force operations as Chief Drake already alluded. This is part of our training that we go through uh, on an annual basis uh, where we, and along with our fire department personnel, go in and begin setting up rescue corridors so that we can move any type of victims or anyone that needs medical care out from the school and out to our medical professionals to get them to the hospitals. Um, I want to also say I'm very, very proud of the men and women of Midtown Hills Precinct. Uh, majority of our 80 tail personnel that are work patrol responded on this date, along with our community field intelligence team and numerous of other divisions and precincts throughout Davidson County. Um, I will tell you from witnessing these individuals and other several other officers entering into the school. Um, it reminded me of a scripture that said, um, who shall I send? And it, it says, send me. And I, I believe these individuals, along with every Metro National Police Officer, Fire Department personnel on that date, answered that call. I also want to say, uh, as Chief Drake's already mentioned, the preparation that the school did that day, uh, the training that they went through, I believe that mirrored with the response from the police department saved countless of lives. Um, I was able to speak to one of the administrators as they were coming out, and she was able to help relay information to teachers and staff members that were still inside, which is a huge help um, with coordinating communication. Obviously, there's a long road ahead of us. Um, one of the biggest things that Chief Drake's push here is wellness, for not only for our officers, but we know there's going to be a long road for the victims that are involved as well. Um, but on that date, all I can say is uh, just very, very proud, very appreciative of the training that we've received. And um, like I've told many, many people before, you would have never known that Rex wasn't part of the team that went in that date. It was a seamless effort uh, going into the school and doing what they've been trained to do. Um, so from everything from the reunification site, so once you have an incident like that, our, my primary responsibility was to start setting up staging locations, reunification site, media staging site, uh, because when something like that occurs, there's hundreds of officers that are answering the call to come there. So uh, I just want to say thank you to all the other 
command staff personnel that responded on that day and assisted with that call for service. Um, but that's a general overview of the response, and I, I really want to just pass it on to the officers so they can give you a, a detailed synopsis on what they did that day. Detective Sergeant Jeff Mathis is an 11-year veteran of this police department and is currently assigned to the Midtown Hills Precinct. Sergeant Mathis and three of the detectives from his unit were among the first to enter the Covenant Building on the morning of March 27th. Sergeant Mathis will now relate to us what he saw and what he did. Sergeant Jeff Mathis. Good afternoon. My name is Detective Sergeant Mathis. I am the uh, supervisor of Midtown Hills Community Field Intelligence Team. Uh, I'd like to start with my condolence, condolences to those families. Um, I will never wear red and black again the same. Um, that's going to be with me forever. Uh, my initial response to the incident, uh, we were actually in our office. Um, I was doing some storage organization for our office and different equipments. Uh, we at the police department have nine th or sorry, 1,000 codes, so one, two, three, four, up to nine. Uh, those 1,000 codes indicate usually critical incidents that will require large amounts of response from police, fire, and medical. Uh, we received a 9,000 call, which is an active shooter. Uh, when the address went out, um, I knew exactly where it was. Based on uh, my personal life, I do frequent that area, um, and I've always known that to be the church on the hill uh, as you go up. Hillsborough Road. Um, didn't know the exact address at the time, uh, but now I'll, I will know that it's the Covenant School. Um, my response, along with three of my detectives, was to run out the door. Uh, we don donned our vests uh, with ballistic protection and drove to the school. Uh, once arriving at the school, I parked in front. Um, when I got out of my vehicle, I retrieved my uh, department-issued shotgun from the back and uh, while doing that, I overheard who I now know as Officer Rex Engelbert saying, I need three, as you guys have seen on the video. Uh, to that point, I have never seen Rex in my life. Um, he is not a man that I've ever seen in a photo or ever met. Um, he works, he's a younger officer with four years on. Um, I've been at South Precinct and then Midtown Precinct that I have just have never had an instance to know this man. Um, when we got there, uh, unbeknownst to me, the he had already unlocked the door. Um, as you go, the body cam showed the, uh, I forget, I haven't gotten the name of the gentleman, that the administrator that had that key, um, but I'd like to thank him for what he did. Um, he had your typical janitor's key ring with a thousand keys to every, every door, and he had the very specific key to that door for us to go in. Um, myself, Officer Engelbert, and uh, a Midtown ADTEL officer went uh, through that door. Um, officer Engelbert opened the door for me. Um, not knowing what I was walking in through, I went through that door with purpose. I, I knew the gravity of the situation and what had occurred based on the call text, the amount of callers, um, and it, it, it was a serious incident. Um, like Chief Drake said, our training is to follow stimulus when we enter these buildings for these um, active shooter situations. At that time, we did not have any. Um, our training then is to do a systematic room-by-room -room clearing, which is what myself and Officer Engelbert did. Uh, once we hit the large, I believe it's a welcome center or atrium on the first floor, is when we received stimulus from the shooter. Um, we were still unsure where that was, but our job is to run towards it. So um, we went through a pair of double doors. And at, at that point, unbeknownst to me, because I was focused on those double doors that we went through, Officer, uh, or I'm sorry, Detective Clazo and others had responded and gotten up to us at that point. Um, when we went through the doors, the shots continued. Um, I couldn't tell you how many there were, to be honest with you. Um, we just heard the sounds. From my training and experience, I knew those sounds to be rifles, uh, rifle rounds that were being fired based on uh, what it was. Um, we proceeded up the stairs. Uh, once we got to the stairs, we got to a second floor hallway. Um, once in that hallway, the smell of gunpowder was in the air. Um, it was also very smoky, uh, obvious that... Uh, 
there had been fire in that in that area very quickly. I'm doing what our training tells us to do in those situations and following the stimulus, all of us stepped over a victim. Um, I, to this day, don't know how I did that morally, um, but training is what kicked in. We then proceeded continually to with the sounds of gunfire. Um, and then once we got near the shooter and the shooter was neutralized, um, that's where I'll end my statement at, the, at that moment, just because of the ongoing investigation. Um, afterwards, uh, I do have um, history and in investigations. Knowing the gravity of the situation, it is obviously the best option for us to have a transparent investigation that can be complete and thorough. Um, you can see in the video, I, I believe I said secondaries and security is what I said. Um, and that security was for that crime scene. Uh, based on our duty to do thorough investigations. Also, in active killer scenarios, you never know if there's only one or there's many. So our, our work is not done at that point. We still have to search for victims and then transition into that uh, rescue task force that we train also. I think that would be it for me. Thank you, Jay. Officer Rex Engelbert is a four-year veteran of this police department. He is assigned to the central or downtown precinct and, as you have seen from his body camera footage, was among the first officers to enter the Covenant building. Officer Rex Engelbert. I was working in a regular uh, duty capacity that day. Uh, I want to start by obviously saying my deepest con condolences to the family, the six lives lost on the 27th of this month. Uh, I'm going to do my best to relay my rendition of, of, of my day. Uh, it was a regular work day for me. Uh, for some reason, uh, I was feeling tired. Uh, I'm a proactive unit. I work for the Central BD Till bike team. Uh, I guess I hadn't finished my coffee and I wanted to complete some administrative tasks. So I wanted to go to the uh, Metro Police Academy. I had some business to attend to there uh, and en route there that put me in the uh, Midtown sector. So I really had no business being where I was. Uh, I think you can call it fate or God or whatever you want, but uh, there I can't count on both my hands the irregularities that put me in that position when a call for service came out for an act of deadly aggression at a, a school. I immediately uh, turned on my lights and sirens, knowing the severity of such a call. Like Sergeant said, it demands ample resources in which I was available. Like I said, I was tending to myself. Uh, I've been to, I don't know how many false act of deadly aggression calls. Something told me it was, uh, it was time to, to really get to this one. Uh, I treat them all the same, but I, uh, I was driving as safely as I could get my, my body there. Uh, I, d I don't know the area. I needed to put it in GPS. When I arrived, I don't know the layout of the school. Uh, luckily, due to the bravery of two staff members, they stayed on scene. They didn't run. And they gave me concise, clear uh, information for me to use to help uh, anyone in danger. The gentleman gave me, like he said, the exact key I needed to enter the building. 
uh, it was readily apparent uh, I was I was going to be the one to make entry, and I, I've been given my training. I, I know my role, and uh, I made entry with with the personnel I had, and luckily I had some. I saw there were patrol units, and I I asked for people to join me as I had a key. I was unaware of there were any other access points other than the one I had. As the uh, sergeant said, I did not have stimulus at the time. I was intently listening. So we cleared uh, the hallway we had room by room uh, until we made it into the lobby. Uh, I, like you said, I don't work with anyone uh, that was there that day. So we had to use plain speak to understand each other's roles, what we had to do. When I did hear stimulus, I, I couldn't get to it fast enough. I just looked for a the nearest sta staircase I could find because I could tell it was above my head. Uh, eventually following the uh, 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 guidance of other officers, I uh, luckily deployed my, uh, my rifle, uh, kept walking towards the gun, the sound of gunfire. Uh, there was like Sergeant said, some smoke in the air. Uh, it was uh, very, uh, very similar to the training we receive, the, the stress inoculus that our training academy uh, had exposed me to before this incident. Uh, I definitely wish I had uh, also deployed my uh, rifle caliber rated heavy plates when I uh, found myself at the front of the stack uh, where I found uh, the, the stimulus of the threat the second floor of the school uh, like Sergeant said work wasn't over uh, we, we we didn't know if there was another threat immediately took teammates I, I am not used to working with to start clearing rooms uh, escorting children and teachers along and there were uh, more personnel and resources at this point I was able to guide them out uh, basically uh, similar to the way I had came in and uh, just tried coordinating best with uh, supervisors and uh, fire personnel until I was uh, relieved of, uh, of duty on that scene I was told to, to sit in my car and that was uh, pretty difficult because I could tell there was more work to be done uh, and that's that's about the day that I had on the 27th thank you Rex detective Mike Colazzo is a nine-year veteran of this police department and he is assigned to the same unit as Sergeant Mathis in fact he works uh, for Sergeant Mathis. Uh, Sergeant Mathis is his supervisor. Detective Mike Colazzo. Um, I want to start with um, making, making sure the families know that we're thinking about them. Um, I know a lot of people have reached out to myself, Officer Rex, Sergeant Mathis, uh, our teammates as well. There's been an outpour of support from the community, um, from other agencies throughout the, the nation and through the world. And I just want to tell them we uh, greatly appreciate that. But I also hope that uh, they were that along with all of us that we remember the victims. And uh, about that day in question, um, like Sergeant Mathis had stated, we were we had just started our shift and we were at the office. Um, I was completing some administrative uh, task, sending some emails when uh, the radio was, I believe I had my radio sitting on my desk. Uh, uh, one of our partners, uh, Detective Wagner, he sits uh, to the left of me, I believe his radio was there. And uh, we heard the 10 co or the thousand code go out of the uh, active shooter. And um, we heard the dispatch location and that it was in Midtown. Uh, regardless if it was in Midtown or not, uh, like every other officer in our department, uh, we took off running out of the office. 
uh, plugged in the address on our GPSs and we, we took off towards the location. Um, as we were uh, on our way to the, to, the, to the school itself, our dispatch was doing a phenomenal job. They were giving us as much updates as they could. Um, tell, they told us that the individual had entered into the school. They were actively shooting, uh, gave us a description, and they were receiving this information from the individuals that were already on scene. Um, when I arrived on scene, another officer had already arrived on scene. Um, I, to this day, I still don't know who that officer is. There was hundreds of officers that responded. But I've learned that that officer had arrived on the other side of the school. Um, I came off of Harding Pike and entered uh, coming up the hill towards the school. When I started to approach or when I pulled my car up, I observed uh, a female uh, on the cell phone uh, who later found out was uh, one of the employees of the school. Um, the female was pointing to the left. Uh, so I ended up pulling my vehicle towards the left. Uh, I ran into another individual, a male that was outside, uh, rolled my window down, uh, asked where, where they were. Uh, that individual who I later learned was also an employee of the school, um, told me that they were around the side and asked where. And at that point, without, without hesitation, the employee just took off running towards uh, the door that was later learned to be where the shooter had entered. He uh, took off running and telling me to follow him, which helped out tremendously. Um, so I stayed in my vehicle and drove that direction. Um, he was kind of hugging around the vehicles that were parked on the side because, like they said, we didn't know where the shooter was. He just knew that the shooter had uh, entered into this uh, door right, un like right at the entrance. So he said when he got closer to the door, he pointed and told me that uh, they had entered right there. So I ended up parking my vehicle, exiting, and uh, noticed that all the glass to that door had been shot out. Saw shell casings on the ground, uh, bullet holes on the door. Uh, so I immediately made entry. Um, as I made entry into the school, I saw an individual that I believe has been identified as the janitor. Um, he was laid out on the ground, um, not moving. Um, I relayed that information to the uh, over our radio to the dispatch that I had made entry and that uh, I had an individual that was down. Still didn't have a stimulus. Uh, the shooter wasn't shooting at that point. So started just like Officer Rex, Sergeant Mathis, and every other officer that had gotten there, um, started clearing rooms as uh, fast as possible, trying to find where uh, the shooter was. I was on the first floor. Um, I had cleared uh, part of the first floor and along with the gymnasium uh, when I had somehow made my way towards a door that led me back outside. That's where I made contact with uh, one of our uh, teammates, uh, Officer or Detective Wagner, and uh, two patrol officers. At that point, we, had, we were told that the shooter was uh, possibly on the second floor. So at that point, that's when on the body cam you see where we ended up going up the stairwell and made our way to a locked door. At the time, I was upset that we had just hit a locked door, but now looking back, I'm thankful we hit a locked door because that was the school doing what they've been trained to do. Um, the door was locked, so knowing uh, we didn't have a way of getting in and hearing on the radio that Officer Rex and Sergeant Mathis uh, had a team and that they were making entry, um, the decision was made that we'd push back out and uh, link back with the, or try to link up with those officers that were making entry on another side. Uh, we ended up cutting through the gymnasium that, like I said, that we had already previous gone, uh, previously had gone through. Um, by that point, Detective Plesey had uh, linked up with us along with Detective Cagle, who both were on the same team. Um, when we came in the hallway, that's when uh, you could see down the hallway, uh, Sergeant Mathis was uh, standing watching a hallway uh, and later learned Officer Rex and some others had gone to the right and were clearing rooms. Uh, we ran down that hallway because uh, knowing that they had they were already ahead of us, uh, it was believed those rooms had been cleared. So we linked up with Sergeant Mathis. Um, I told Sergeant Mathis we were with them, uh, and then we continued uh, systematically clearing uh, the rooms that we came upon. Um, at some point around that time frame is when we started hearing the first shots. 
Um, once we started hearing the first shots, that's when everything kind of kicked into overdrive for us. Uh, we had gone up the stairwell, uh, made our way down the hallway. That's when we ran it, or that's when I ran into that second victim, um, laid on the ground. We had to push past the victim because uh, we continued to hear more shots being fired. Um, like Sergeant Matta stated, it was very distinctive. You could clear as day tell that there were rifles, uh, rifle rounds being fired. We came upon a T intersection. Uh, Sergeant Mathis was on one side and I was on the other side. Um, we didn't know if the shooter was still left or the right. It was, smoke was everywhere. Um, the fire alarm was going off. It was somewhere right around that point, we heard a, another shot and it, so it told us that the shooter was to our right. Um, when we, that's when I made the call and yelled that the shooter was right and we pushed right and uh, continued down that hallway. Officer Rex had caught up to us. Um, I noticed that Officer Rex had a rifle with a, uh, with a uh, LPVO on it, uh, not knowing where the shooter was in the distance that we would possibly encounter with the shooter. Uh, asked Officer Rex to push forward for us, which he did without hesitation. Um, we continued down that path until we encountered the shooter. Once the situation was uh, ended with the shooter, like uh, Sergeant Mathis and everybody stated, our job wasn't done. We knew that there was victims. We had, we had to pass those victims. Um, so. I immediately uh, switched gears, left that scene, and ran the route that we had just taken back outside. Other officers had responded, and they were uh, making entry on different rooms. Uh, it had been broadcasted that the um, shooter had been taken down, and I think it, it clicked for every officer that was on scene that at that point. It was uh, time to start trying to uh, render aid to the victims and start evacuating the school. So we implemented our uh, rescue task force protocol. I ended up coming out of a separate door that we had not made entry into, um, linked up with one of the uh, ADTEL supervisors that was outside with commander and uh, coordinated with the sergeant on where, or where, everything was take, where everything had taken place and to have officers start responding in with us. I remained there for a while until uh, more officers got on scene. When they all, when, when I felt like uh, enough officers were on scene, uh, commander had stepped up and uh, advised us to uh, step back and go to our vehicles. Um, that was pretty much, at that point I was done with the uh, scene. I wanted to help. I know Officer Rex wanted to help. I know Sergeant Mathis wanted to help and continue to do what we could. But at that point, enough of our Co-workers were there and it, they, they were handling it for us. Um, so we were able to step aside. Um, that's when I was able to uh, call my wife and uh, tell her I was okay, advise her of everything. And that, um, yeah. I wanna add something just really quick. I know you have some questions of uh, these officers. I wanna say something. Um, these officers immediately went in and if you notice, you saw one officer had on a helmet and that was totally great and the right thing to do. But then you saw other officers who didn't take the time to even put on ballistic helmets. They were so in tune to trying to get in and take this threat down that they didn't think about their own safety. Um, you can see Detective Colazzo and Rex and this going on and, and it really in these situations could have ended uh, really bad for our personnel too. And I just wanted to add that. Uh, we had so many personnel that was running in uh, that didn't think about ballistic vests, that didn't think about ballistic helmets. They just wanted to save kids. And I just wanted to add that before you ask questions of the officers. I'm incredibly, incredibly thankful and grateful for the efforts. So. Thank you, Chief, and thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I know this was not easy to do this for the first time ever today. Uh, folks, this is not an investigative news conference. We're not talking about the investigation today. Uh, these officers are not involved in the investigation. They were the first persons there. 
With that said, if you have any questions for them, please let me know who the question is for. Jason? For the responding officers, thank you for telling your narrative and your story of what happened. I think a lot of people that are watching tonight want to know how you all are doing right now, uh, more than a week later. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Something I didn't mention earlier is um, we have had such an outpouring of support from the community and not only just the Green Hills, Forest Hills area, but from all over. I've received emails from people from outside the country, all over the nation that is sending support. Um, we've had students, students from the school that day that have come to the precinct to visit with these officers. Um, we've had church members come and, and pray over these officers. Um, our behavioral health staff here has done a phenomenal job with the tasks they've been given. Um, you know, they, they're completing debriefs over 150, 200 officers that ultimately responded or in, was part of the investigation. Um, part of my role is to make sure the members of uh, my precinct are taken care of. Um, continue to stay on top of them and communicate. I, I know each one of them has a, a great support system at home and at work. Uh, so I just wanted to add that, that the, the community as a whole has been tremendous through this entire ordeal. And I'll let them speak on anything else. Do one of you want to come up and just... Just personally curious, just if, if you guys are all okay. We've we've had multiple conversations with each other. Um, for for the situation, I think everyone is doing well. Um, there's obviously been loss of sleep. Children hugged more than normal. Um, me personally, I dropped my kid off that morning just like I normally would at daycare. And um, one of the best things that our behavior health staff um, has given me and others is to keep your routine. Um, don't uh, create any bad habits. Don't get rid of any good habits, or vice versa. So, we've we've struggled for a little bit of um, relief from the strain that it was caused. Obviously, seeing very very terrible things. Um, but as Commander Wheeler said, we have a good support system not only with ourselves but um, the community as a whole, and a m majority of us um, have personal support systems from either. Um, outside family members or churches that have stepped up drastically to uh, reach out. Mike Rex, anything to add? Every detective lies out to you. That was just a little, you said the first thing you did was call your wife and let her know you were safe. What has your family member uh, support been like? Um. So I, I can tell you that just like every other officer that was out there, it's not just us. Um, my wife's going through this. My family's going through this. Officer Rex's fiance is going through this. Sergeant Mathis's wife's going through all this. And uh, it's tough, um, but our department's done a phenomenal job. Um, our support doesn't just go towards the officers, it goes to the family. Uh, so we're working on that, um, setting up interviews for uh, our family members to go through, uh, talk to counselors, talk to the chaplain, and it, it helps. Um, a lot of the community that's reached out has actually talked about our families and that they're praying for our families and they're thinking about our families, and it, it goes a long way for us. One or two, one or two more questions. Here first. I know that at least one of you is a father, and I'm wondering how you explain to your children not only what happened that day, but also your role that day? Uh, I've got an 11 month old. Um, obviously it's difficult. I will have this conversation with him when he is old enough and ready. Um, the biggest thing that I will instill on him is how proud I am of the actions, not only of other officers of but what what I did not knowingly doing um, our training kicked in it's it's what should have happened it's what happened 
Um, as far as having kids, um, I mean, me personally, I took an oath on June 4th of 2012 to serve and protect this community. My family sometimes comes second. It has to. In instances like this, I don't get to stop and say time out and go talk to my wife, talk to my kids. I'm here to make sure everybody else goes home as much as, or as many can and stabilize the community as best possible. One more question. That's going directly to the officer involved shooting that they can't address at this point. Okay. I'll take one more. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Our training is very, um, we do stress inoculated training. Uh, we know exactly what to do, how we're going to clear rooms, how we're going to identify each other, and, uh, and not to put those protocols out. But we, uh, you, you always worry about that. It could happen. Uh, but it, it did not uh, in this instance because of the way we train. CNN. Okay. 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 As far <clears throat> as far as Uvalde goes, that that would never cross my mind. Um, that was that was nowhere near anything in my in my head or these gentlemen's head at that moment. Um, I've been getting the same training that I deployed since 2012. Um, we are trained to a very high standard. As Chief said, we do stress inoculation, um, and there's a reason for that, because it, when we opened that door and the fire alarm was going off, I've been through that. That was something that was already there. I knew what I was capable of doing at that moment, and when we put that training to use, regardless of when it is trained, uh, we get the outcomes that we had. Who's interested in getting any other opinions on that? I ask you, Mike. It, just piggybacking off of Sarge, it, our training academy has put us through this um, countless times. Um, our, we're blessed also to go to outside uh, our department for training. Um, anytime training pops up, I know everybody's jumping at the bit to go to it, um, and it just it played a part in how we responded. Officer Rex. So these officers didn't have to be here today. They agreed to come and speak with you. They had the choice of whether to do this or not. So I want to thank them all for being here today, for taking this time, and for sharing uh, what Officer Wells said during the bombing was his truth. Thank you for sharing your truth. Thank you all for being here today.